Good morning. This is Lisa. Welcome to King Worldwide. It's my dad, Roy. Hello, everybody. Welcome to God's Way of Success. This is where we talk about God's Way of Success, yeah. actually. That's, that's the title. Okay, so today we're talking about control the playing field. Okay, get started. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. I'm excited about the day because uh, at the very beginning, two mm -hmm. natural analogies I'm going to make are right in my wheelhouse. And by that, I mean I played sports all the way through college, played three sports in college. I was honored to play basketball for Hall of Fame coach Al McGuire. So amazing. And, and so, uh, obviously, I learned a lot of things about, uh, about sports. And, uh, and uh, I want to give you two examples that, that I think that will lead in really good to what we want to talk about today. And the first one is that about football. And that is the – I'm going to use the example – of the Green Bay Packers, and their mm -hmm. uh, historic coach was uh, Vince Lombardi, and uh, uh, probably the most celebrated, victorious mm -hmm. coach uh, in all of NFL history. As a matter of fact, the uh, the Super Bowl trophy is named after him, so the, that's that's a pretty good indication. But yes. here's what he did. I mean, he he had these pro football players, and he started off the season, and he says. This is a football. Oh, I should have gotten one. This is a football. And so he started with the fundamentals, and then he went from there far as explaining that uh, we throw the football and we catch it. <laughs> we run the football. And in order to do that, what we do is that we block people, the defensive players, so that we can run and throw. Yeah. And great. then on, on defense, we set up a scheme or a strategy whereby what we do will stop the other team. So You know what they're going to be doing by so, watching plays, et cetera, sure. so, beforehand. So they had fundamentals, and then and then what they did is that they executed a pre-planned strategy that was kind of all-involving. I mean, because they didn't know the next play the, from the other team. But it, would, but, it's, it should all-encompassing. It should cover yeah, every – it could possibly right. cover every so play. They, okay. So they were they were on top of their game, so to speak. Now, the second example is that about basketball. That's what I can talk about. And you can. And I'm going to use the example of the Chicago Bulls when Michael Jordan played for oh, them. They did the yes. same thing as far as the fundamentals. And Phil Jackson was the uh, – he was the coach. And uh, – he went back to basics, the same thing, as far as dribbling, passing, shooting, uh, setting picks, which you might not know what that is, screen, and uh, so that excuse me, players could get open and they could shoot the shot. Rebounding, hustling, basics moving, move, of moving your feet, uh, quickness of, of feet moving, not reaching in and foul, and things like that. So same thing, fundamentals and then executing a strategy on the basketball court. Same. Now, we live in a world that's infested uh, with fear. I like that word, infested. My trainer here gave me that. We, that's infested with fear and his cousins. Well, who are his cousins? Fear, worry, doubt, unbelief. The branches of the fear tree. Envy, strife, jealousy. Resentment. All bitterness, you, worry. You, you go on the fear tree envy. and you'll see. Just things, that, just things, quite honestly, that go through our mind, most people's minds, day in, day out. Well, why, why, is, why is, is, are we infested with that? Well, the reason why is that in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, it says that Satan is the god of this world. And then also in John eight forty four, is that it says that Satan is a liar, and the father mm -hmm. of it. He he is, if you will, he's a deceiver. He's, he's a, like the stepfather because he stole it from Adam, deceived them, and stole yeah, it from he, Adam. And he he's like a trickster. What he tries oh, to do? Oh, con artist. Yeah, what he tries to do is to trick you into thinking his ways. And it and, and he doesn't and show he's, it. And he's quite good at it. Yes, fact. he tries to do it in the, like your voice or my voice to you. It's just. Most people don't see it. No. They think, oh, that's just my thought. No, it's not. Yeah. yeah. So, so our play and, feel, uh, play and feel in life starts with our mind. And if we are to enjoy God's way of success, we must know and execute the first strategy. And the first strategy 
is outlined in Romans 12, 2, and we've got it here in the NLT version that Lisa's going to read. Do you mind if I read 1 and 2? That's because fine. For you, me, can, you can one, read 1, 2, and 3. Because for me, 2 didn't matter if I didn't do 1. Right. Okay, so here we go really quick. Well, I like the NLT version because it ties into exactly what we're talking about here today. So I'm just going to go NLT. I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. Stop. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. Well, what are they? Look around you, and that will give you a good indication of what those behaviors are. So like how people do business, how um, people, quote, make money. Why how, people, how people speak. How people think. Why people go to jobs. They're going. Most people think Christians go to the jobs because they need to earn a living or put food on the table. But that's not why God put us here. He put us here on assignment, and he takes care of us. The next part, he says, but let God transform us, you, into a new person by changing the way you think. Changing our thoughts. Then you will learn to know God's will for you. That's precisely what happened to me, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And God's will is seamless. There are no bumps. It happens perfectly. Sincerely, it's perfectly. And we, all we do is stand against the deceiver. Nope, I'm not having that. Nope, I'm not having that. Nope, I'm not having that. And it's a chore, but it's fun. Good, I like that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Renewing our mind requires our involvement. It just doesn't happen. We've got to be proactive as far as uh, getting involved. It requires our involvement in order, in order to really know God's thoughts. Now, Lisa's going to read here Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, and, uh, and that's going to highlight exactly, and she's in the message translation, and that's going to highlight exactly the foundation of what we're talking about. Okay, and this is one of the first scriptures the Lord gave me in 2012. I don't. Th God is saying, I don't think the way you think. The way you work isn't the way I work. God's decree. For as the sky, I'm going a little bit further to finish the paragraph. For as the sky soars high above the earth, so the way I work surpasses the way. Okay, wait, this is the part. The way I work surpasses the way you work. God is saying the way I think is beyond the way the world thinks or you think. So it's not saying that we're not able to. This is the Old Testament before Jesus came. And it's saying, wake up, people. I'm giving you my law so you can, if you follow my law in the Old Testament, I'll be able to speak with you. And I have prophets at the Old Testament. And Jesus came, and now he's saying, do what I'm telling you to do so you can think like we think. God, Holy Spirit, and Jesus. So that's exactly what we're to pursue in order to win God's way. We are to pursue his thoughts different than our thoughts. Now, if we don't do that, then fear and all of its cousins on the fear tree. Worry, doubt, they, unbelief. They will dominate our life. How do you know that? Just take a check on your thoughts at times. Are you worrying about something? Do you have fear about something? Do you have anxiety? People are saying, I I'm not afraid of anything. Okay. If you are asking yourself, how are you going to put your children through college, that is worry, that is fear. If you're asking yourself, how are you going to pay your bills at the end of the month, or an assessment, right. a $20,000 assessment that's just established in your condo, how are you going to do that? What am I going to do? With, that is worry. That is getting over into Satan's way. Right. Everybody has done it. The thing is, most preachers don't preach it yet. And you have to capture the thought, 2 right. Corinthians 10, 5, and stop it and replace it with the word. That is what they call the good fight of faith. I call it enforcing the victory. Same difference. If we don't do it, we will not excel. Every day, we have hundreds of thoughts, hundreds that, of thoughts yeah. that, that just flush through our mind. And here's the cool thing. All of these thoughts come from the spirit realm. They're either spirit of darkness or spirit of light, either the spirit of evil or the spirit, the spirit of good, so we got the thoughts coming through. They're rolling through. So how do we control the playing field? Getting back to our title. The, how do we control the playing field of our minds? Here's the first strategy. 
The first strategy is to read the Bible. That's why Lisa recited Romans 12 too. We read the Bible and we deposit God's thoughts in our mind. What that does is that we start to change and we change provided that we do it consistently and we put more of God's thoughts in our mind yes. than we do as far as the natural world thoughts. Yes. If we put an hour of natural word thoughts in our mind. TV, social and, media. And 15 minutes of God's word, we ain't making no progress. I can attest to that for years and years and years. Maybe you should repeat that. The If we put an hour of natural word thoughts in our mind, we let them come in and let them just kind of sit there. TV, sports reels, sports casts. It doesn't have to be wicked or Satan. It is natural. Natural. And if if we put in an hour of that in 15 minutes doing our duty, which is what I used to do years ago. Me too. Of, of God's word, we ain't making much progress. What we're doing is that we're just falling back more and more into the And we're pit. telling Satan to come look at us and he'll start deceiving us. And that's why Christians fall and fail and quit. And so when we do more of the word, get more of God's thoughts in our mind, then what we start to change Transform. The word and, transforms us. And and we can successfully counterattack the world system of negative, ungodly, unkind thoughts that come. To succeed, I will emphasize this mm -hmm. because this is what I had to learn to do. To succeed, it must be God's thoughts must be deposited consistently. Not just on Sunday at church, not on Wednesday at church. Not just here, that, here. Here's what I did, which kind of got me into the habit of the routine, is that I got into the habit every time I would eat natural food is that I would spend some time in God's Word deposited Great. His thoughts into my mind so that it would start to transform it so that when something came up, an issue came up, I could quickly go to God's thoughts and counterattack it and, and rebuke it. And the Lord is saying, stop making excuses just because he's his age and I'm my age and we're not working outside of ministry or whatever, or counseling. Um, it's a decision. I did this for two years working a pharmaceutical sales job because the Lord wanted an example of someone doing it. You can do it. It's a decision. If you usually have to have a meeting at lunch, well, then you should have 30 minutes at least to have a, go to the bathroom time. Well, go in the bathroom and read the word. Do, don't just say, I can't do it. I can't do it. Are y'all, that's where Satan is lying. And it's, yeah. we have, I saw a, um, a preacher say, the only thing where Satan lives is in the will. We have a choice. Use your will. Yeah. The little bit, if you don't even have much willpower, just use it to, to make a decision and start with God's word. Let me give you a recent example that I had in uh, being transparent. And this was pretty recent within the last week is that I had negative thoughts about an individual that kind of popped up in my mind. But before it could settle in, because I had consistently for quite a while now Practice. deposited God's word, I had, if you will, put his thoughts into my mind. I had more of God's thoughts and the world thoughts. Yes. Is that before it could really settle in, I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Mm. Satan, those are not my thoughts. You're a liar and the father of it. I cast down the imagination, let's say it was doubt, and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And I said, my thoughts are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, good Libyan's report. Right. And, and, and let me say this. And I did that, and here's what happened. It was just like I was washed with peace. And immediate, like an immediate inner peace came came over me. Now, if you want a shortened version, and I did this just within the last 24 hours. If you want a short, you must think, you might think, well, gosh, you got all these terrible thoughts. I well, do it too. It's but, Satan. But, but Satan's around, and so therefore he, he's trying to trying to attack. But here's what I did in the last 24 hours, and this is, this is a shortened version, but it's just as good, and that is I cast all of my cares over on you, Lord, because you care for me. And then I said, that's 1 Peter 5, and then what I said was that I refuse to fret or have any anxiety about Great. anything. That's Philippians 4, 6. Now, 
there's other parts. There's more to the, each, each of those uh, passages, but those are the shortened versions, and they work for me. I cast all of my cares over on you, Lord, because you care for me. I refuse to fret or have any anxiety about anything. The biggest question, I think, is that how you, how you heard that thought and how you didn't let it spin around in the filter and take it. That yeah. is the biggest difference I've seen in you, that we've all had thoughts our whole yeah. life. How long do we keep it in that filter yeah. and spin around, spin around, or take it? There's times I think of keep something in the filter and it's negative. I'm like, what am I doing? Get out! In it's the name going, of Jesus. It's going to be totally predicated on how, how much yes. of God's thoughts are deposited in your mind. You can't you, do it with mental yeah, assent. If you've, got, if you've got a little deposit, it's just like in the bank. At the bank, if you deposit a little bit of money, that's all you're going to get out. If you deposit a lot, you're going to get a lot out. Well, the same thing as far as uh, taking God's word and reading so it good. and just depositing it because the more you deposit it, the quicker it's going to come up. I had another thing just this morning. I'm not going to go into it <laughs> as far as that uh, just just something I was going to do. And I said, all right, Holy Spirit, what, what? I was going to text somebody. And, uh, and I haven't done this yet. i do it later today. And I said, what should – I'll send a picture. I said, what should you, should you say? And because – because I have, for quite a while now, deposited his thoughts, he, he, the Holy Spirit gave him right on the spot. He says, God's delay is not God's denial. Yes. And that was totally appropriate to the situation. Yes. And, but I didn't try to go through my mind and I'll try, well, what's the What you've done is you've, halt, you've used self-control with the Holy Spirit and halted the mental activity. That's what you've done. But it came from deposit, deposit Yes, because deposit. you tried to do it before right. yes or no. You yeah. said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be in control. I'm going to be. But you can't. One can't do it. I don't care who you are. I don't care how strong your mind is. This is yeah. the strongest willed man I've ever met, seen, know about. The thing is, if if you the, the word of God is the only thing that does it, I don't care how strong you are because it won't. It's a spiritual thing. You don't have to understand it. High glory to God. Praise Jesus. And so. I'm just, that's the biggest thing that I've noticed. But it was the inundation with the Word of God it that is, transformed yeah. you to be able to capture it, right? And that's why I give the analogy as far as at the very beginning, years and years ago, is that each time that I would eat physical food, is that if I did it three times a day, which I did then, I'm doing it twice a day now, is that what I would do is that I would read, I would deposit spiritual food into my mind. I, that's what I did. And, uh, the, and, and here's what you need to remember is that the, the author of the Bible who penned yes. the Bible lives in us. Yes, when we allow one, him. 1 John 4, 4, so greater is he that's in us yes, than he that's in the world. Yes, thank you, Jesus. So the author, which is the Holy Spirit, and he moved through like John and Paul and Peter and the rest of them, he lives in us. And so as a result, when we develop that relationship with him, and we put enough of God's thoughts in, it's, it's, it, the transition is much quicker from natural reasoning yes. to God's thoughts. And so quite honestly, is that we don't have an excuse. If we want, if we want, to, if we want to prosper and if we want to live victoriously in all areas of life, we have no excuse because we we've got the word we got the holy spirit yes. within us and and i'll be transparent too for years and years and years and years and years of my adult life i thought my thoughts were right on the money and i kept mm, that was, this is because so i i wasn't in the word much as much you were always I, I, I was some but i it was my example as far as an hour of natural reasoning versus 15 minutes of the word and and so stuff came up, natural reason, worry, fear, doubt, all this stuff. It would come in and it would control. And uh, that. Uh, and so I understand why most people, that if not everybody, is that as they go through life, they're controlled by natural reason. But Which it is Satan. But it doesn't have to be that way. But you've got to be proactive and you've got to take, you've got to take a stance as far as saying, that God is going to lead my life, and why are these natural thoughts, why are they ungodly? Well, the reason why they're ungodly because they're out of love. Because they're out of love, and they're do-it-yourself. Self, 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 self. Pride, Satan. 
in, in the New Testament, I think it's John 13, 34, it says, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you, you love one another. Well, anything outside of love. But how is making money, get making money for my kids not love? It's deception because you're trying to do it yourself. If you're trying to do it yourself with your own thoughts, without God guiding you, yes. You've got to have a source of income. But he and that will so, do it. That source is God. And he'll give you the assignment. Yes. Place where you work or what you do and all. Yes. He'll, he'll give you give you the assignment. And the more you go th- go to him throughout the day, inquire as to what to do, what to say yes. on your job, whatnot, then the more that you're going to prosper. And as you do that over a period of time, those thoughts will start taking over. And as a He'll result, your you. natural thoughts will kind of subside a little bit. And then you know you're on the right track. Yes, and then he'll bring he'll bring scholarships for your children for college when you didn't even know that was available. But the thing is, most Christians in the past did not get into the Word enough and did not stay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is the best quality that and, I learned from I, you. And I was, I, was a good, I was a good example. Well, was we're all example. glory to God. If you can change, we all can change. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. That's true. okay. All right. See y'all soon. Have a great day.